What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna be doing a versus video. We're gonna be doing a direct comparison between two of the most popular carry pistols on the market. We're gonna be comparing head to head the very popular SIG P365, which is a subcompact micro nine millimeter that is the highest selling gun of the last few years. And we're gonna be comparing it to the new hotness, which is gonna be the Canik MC9, which is another subcompact micro nine that is maybe has a little bit different features to it and maybe even a little bit of a different design idea and we're gonna compare them both and see which one's right for you neither one of these are bad guns both of these have full thousand round reviews they're both very positive but if you're choosing between the two of them which I think a lot of you are I think I can break down the details and give you my idea of which one I think is better for which purpose. Now, before we do that, I do wanna mention my page supporters. Thank you guys very much. It's because of you guys, we have both of these guns and I really appreciate it. If you wanna support the channel, just go down to the link in the description below and there'll be a link that'll bring you right to Patreon. You can sign up if you so choose. Also, there's a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. Those kids could really use your help. So please go down there and donate a few bucks to those kids. And finally, I wanted to thank the sponsor of this video, Shields. Shields is one of my favorite spots to go to. They have everything I need. As an Iowa boy, I absolutely love supporting Midwestern companies, and it just so happens I've been going to Shields for hats and shoes and shirts and, and all kinds of stuff for the entirety of my life. Shields has been my local outdoor sporting goods store, and I am very proud to have them as a sponsor. So I'd really appreciate it if you'd go over and check out Shields, and th I thank them for sponsoring this video. That being said, let's go over to the description of each, and let's talk about some of the specs. Let's direct compare them, talk about their reliability, their accuracy, and then maybe you can figure out which one you want. So. This is the SIG P365. Very well known for being one of the first, not the first, micro nine millimeter, taking advantage of the stack and a half technology that's came in the last few years. Now the P365 has a three inch barrel. It is very, very short, very light, 17 ounces uh, unloaded, and it has a magazine capacity of 10, 12, or even 15 rounds, depending on which magazine that you get. Obviously extensions are available for not only this, but the MC9, we're just kind of talking about the stock magazines that you might get with particular different models of the gun. Now, the standard P365 is this size, but they do make an XL, they do make a Spectre Comp, they make a bunch of different versions, which is what happens when a gun is very popular. It has a polymer frame, a steel slide, steel barrel, and then it has a striker fired mechanism in it, which means it has the same trigger pull every single time, not like double single action or anything like that. Both of these are striker fired guns, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, the ergonomics on the P365 are good, and they do come with pretty high quality parts. So we have a pretty good set of the uh, SIG sights here. These are the SIG X-ray sights with a high definition front, which is tritium, and then two tritium valves in the rear. Now, the advantage to night sights is that you can kind of see them on the nightstand a little better, but you can also acquire your sight picture slightly better at night. Now, one thing you have to remember is that even regular sights work at night because you have to use them in conjunction with some sort of white light, weapon light, things like that. We have to identify our targets before we shoot them, so you're obviously going to have the same light source that you use to identify your target to acquire your sights. So, using night sights at night is not as applicable as most people think it is, but it is still good to have for a multitude of different reasons. Now the steel sights are very important. That is probably more important than the uh, night sight capability in my opinion because steel sights with a ledge allow you to be able to rack the gun and malfunction clear with one hand and that can be very important if you're carrying a child or if you're wounded in some way. A lot of different situations. Hell you may only have one arm so if you do it's good to rack the gun off your belt or a barricade or a table or whatever you need to do especially if you have a uh, malfunction of some kind. Front serrations is good. Rear serrations is good. These models do come optic ready if you want them to. Like I said, SIG is pretty a la carte, so you can kind of get whatever you want with the P365. But if it is optic right in the rear, I do like to have front slide serrations and they do work very well. We have kind of a universal rail here and there are lights that go to this rail and this trigger guard, like the TLR7 sub and stuff. So you actually can get weapon lights that fit on this tiny little pistol, which is pretty nice. Going down here, we have a very small grip, and I do have some uh, Talon grips on there. They're like the hybrid ones. They're not sandpaper, they're not rubber, they're just something in the middle, I forget what they're called. And then we have a uh, 10 round magazine, which is what I normally rock, with a little bit of pinky extender, and then they have 12 and 15s as well. So you can either run those if you want a larger magazine capacity, or you can run the shorty, and then you can pocket the 15 rounder and have it for backup if you so need. Now, some of the other features are gonna be that it's nitron finish. They come in a multitude of colors as well. You can get these in FDE. 
and a few other colors. And overall, I think they are one of the best firearms you can get for the size to weight ratio. If you're looking for a tiny, tiny pistol, this is a real good way to go. Let's get into the Canik MC9, which is kind of the new hotness here. And you can see that already it's a little bit bigger gun. How much bigger? We'll compare in a second. This has a 3.1 inch barrel, which is just a little bit bigger. It's gonna have a slightly heavier weight of 21 ounces. So you're looking at about three to four ounces heavier with the MC9. And then you get a 12 to 15 round magazine capacity. So you get a higher standard capacity as well. But again, the P365 can accept those magazines also. We also have front slide serrations on the gun. We have a little bit higher and a little bit thicker slide. There's there's pros and cons to that. The pro is that it's easier to get a hold of. The con is that it makes the gun a little bit heavier. Uh, we have an optics mounting system here, uh, very similar to the P365. This one is the Shield RMS pattern. So it's like the Hollow Sun 507, EPS carry, that kind of thing. And they direct mount right to it. There are adapter mounts, but for the most part, I think almost everybody direct mounts the little micro dots. And that's because of the, of the width of both of these guns. Both these guns are like sub one inch in width. And that's kind of the advantage of the small little micro nines is like if you think of like the Glock 26 in the old days or the M&P subcompact, subcompact pistols in general are generally a little bit thicker whereas the micro subcompacts are thinner. So the same capacity, same caliber, but thinner. And if you're gonna have a thinner gun, you should have a thinner optic as well because it just makes sense if you're gonna try to cut down the size of the pistol that you don't wanna make it bigger. And most of the optic windows and stuff on the hollow suns at least work very well. We have uh, larger ambi controls on the slide release slide lock, which is a give or take. It's easier to get, but it's also easier to hold on to by accident, and sometimes you cause the gun not to have slide lock. If you don't care about that, no big deal, but just be aware that it's easier to do on this than the P365. We have uh, takedown levers here, very similar to the Glock. We have a full Picatinny rail, unlike the SIG, uh, so you can put a lot of different lights on here as opposed to just the standard ones made for the uh, SIG P365. We have a precock striker trigger here, which is gonna be a little bit different. Not only does it have the uh, trigger safety in here, which I actually prefer. It makes it a little safer for me, in my opinion, especially for a striker fire design. Uh, but the trigger is gonna be lighter, smoother, and have a better reset than the P365 as well. Now, as you can see here, the MC9, although it's the new kit on the block, also comes out with a bunch of colors. Uh, you can get half and half, full FDE, black, a couple different colors. We have uh, not night sights, but I would consider them higher quality, a little bit bigger sights than the P365, even though you don't get the high def front, and you don't get the night sight, you do get a large front white dot, which works very well, and then you get a, a larger uh, serrated rear with a canted ledge, which makes it easier to operate uh, the slide with one hand, which is very nice. And in my experience in the sight picture, I noticed no difference between the green or the white. I know the green's a little easier to pick up sometimes, but these sights are a little bigger, so they kind of even things out. We do have a chamber indicator and all that fun stuff on there, but this one does come with back straps, which is nice. It has a roll pin, so you just pop the roll pin out, you can put a different back strap on. And then obviously the grip of this gun and the side of this gun overall is going to be a little bit bigger. Now the downside to the Canik is obviously it doesn't have the fire control unit, which I forgot to mention in the SIG, uh, which is the serialized part. See, the lower on, an, on a firearm is traditionally the serialized part, but on this one, you have the fire control unit, so you can take this out, put an XL lower on here, and still the same upper, vice versa, and you can put a lot of different parts, whereas the MC9 is just a regular old gun, like the old days when you just got one gun, <laughs> and uh, you're basically stuck with the gun. Now, you can probably put uh, longer slides on here and stuff at some point, but the reality is it's never going to be as modular as the fire control unit, but it is bigger, and that's bad for carry, but good for shooting. Bigger gun, generally, physics as they are, a little heavier, a little bit longer barrel, has a little less muzzle flip. This one also having the better trigger allows it to be a lot more shootable in my opinion than the P365. So let's take a look at them side to side here and you will see the Canik isn't much bigger, but it is a little bigger. So we have a little bit longer uh, slide, a little bit longer barrel on there. Not only do you have a longer barrel, but you have a longer slide out the back end as well, making the pistol just a little bit longer. But the grip itself here is gonna be thicker. As you can see there. And then it's gonna be longer as well because uh, you're gonna have two extra rounds on this one. These are not gonna be able to accept the 10 rounders. So they're gonna be one round longer. Obviously, you know, they're half a stack, so they're gonna be up beside each other. Now, the texture on the Canik is gonna be better as well. So not only do you have a bigger gun, a heavier gun, but it's going to have a better trigger and a full, more full grip. So it 
in my opinion, is gonna be more shootable for almost everybody than the P365, just simply because texture helps you hold on to the gun, and the trigger is your interface with the firearm. So if you have a lighter, crisper trigger, the reality is there's just less space to come down and interfere with your sight picture, and we'll show you the reset here. Very, very nice in the Canics. Canics have some of the best triggers on the planet, and uh, coming in for a pretty cheap price point as well. This is the SIG. Still not bad though, but definitely heavier, and definitely a more sluggish and longer reset. Uh, the quicker a reset is on a firearm, the faster you get to that wall, and the faster you're gonna be able to shoot that next shot. So not only do you get better accuracy with the Canic because of that, but you get a higher rate of fire as well. And then introducing that texture and that weight, you get lower recoil so you can keep the gun on target, even uh, making that string of fire even faster. Now, as far as reliability on the two firearms, we've had no problems with either. We've had a couple of bobbles with a couple of the models of the P365, but considering how many we've had on the channel and how many rounds we've put through these, it's really not that bad. You know, over the life of the P365 that we've had here on the channel, we've had the XL, the Spectre Comp, the 380, the 22, several different versions of the 9mm, and I don't know if I can't think of more than two malfunctions, and that honestly, over the entire scheme of probably five or 7,000 rounds we've shot through the P365, super, super reliable, and really only uh, maybe an issue with ammunition every once in a while. Now we do have a full thousand rounds through the MC9, not quite as much testing, but this also had no issues. So I think they're both equally reliable in my personal experience, and you gotta remember this video, and all my videos are just my opinion, and my opinion's based on experience I've had with lots of firearms, and then all the research I've done with other people that have had experience, and my friends and trainers and things like that, but again, only my experience. And, and in my experience, the Canics as a whole are very reliable, and this one in particular is very reliable as well. Interestingly enough, the smaller striker fired guns tend to be more reliable even with subpar ammo because the lighter the slide, the lighter the spring, just the easier it is to run. So we do find often that smaller versions of guns, unlike the 1911 for example, which the smaller you go generally the more unreliable you get, with striker fired guns a lot of times Glock 26s and 19s can be more reliable than 17s or 34s. So, very reliable. Now that brings up another topic that the gun is bigger and it does shoot better, but it is harder to carry, but it does in fact accept the large double stack Canic magazine. So if you have a Canic uh, TP9 or a Canic Rival or even a uh, steel frame, this gun will accept those magazines, whereas the P365 takes P365 magazines, so you are not gonna be able to use the 320 or M17 or AXG magazines like SIG has. So this has a little bit more magazine compatibility, but at the cost of a little bit higher weight and size ratio. Now, accuracy speaking, we've already kind of touched on this, but I would consider them both inherently the same accuracy. I think mechanically you're probably gonna get the same, but because you have a lighter, crisper trigger on this, and because it's a little bit bigger, I think you're gonna shoot this better. Now, my wife prefers this gun. She's a tiny little, cute little lady. Uh, however, she still doesn't shoot the P365 all that well, and that's one of the interesting things I've noticed about the P365, is I feel like you hit a point of diminishing returns, where you get to the Canic MC9, you get to the Shield Plus, you get to guns like that, like maybe the CZ P10 Subcompact or a Glock 26, and what you have is still a pretty shootable platform, but you get so small into the 365 where sometimes people have real deficiencies. And a lot of that comes with trigger reach, a lot of that comes with just an unbelievably lightweight. So what I mean by that is, as far as trigger reach goes, is the smaller you get on the grip, the more likely you are to stick your entire finger into the trigger guard, okay? So we're gonna kind of go like that, and I'm gonna show you that my trigger finger wants to fit comfortably like that. Now unlike a 1911, my trigger finger comes down about like that. And that's how you wanna shoot a gun, by the way. You kinda of wanna worm back a little bit and you wanna keep your finger flat as you pull the trigger, which is very difficult on a small gun and you end up pushing the gun off to the left, generally, if you're right-handed, right if you're left-handed, and you generally end up throwing them low as well. And that becomes more of a problem with a smaller gun. Now, the second thing is, the way to supplement bad trigger control is generally with a good grip. And if you have a real good grip, you can stop the gun from dipping down back and forth. However, the P365 has such a small grip, as you can see there when I put my hand on it, that there's barely any room for that support hand at all. So not only do you eliminate a lot of your recoil control, but you do have 
accuracy issues with your trigger control as well. Things that the Canik MC9 is just big enough to help you out with a little bit. So I do prefer the MC9 as far as shooting on the range, and I do feel more comfortable and confident with the MC9 when I am carrying it. That being said, it is a little bigger, a little more cumbersome, but not very big. And honestly, if you train enough, you can shoot the P365 very well. 10 round capacity of nine millimeter is still more than enough for concealed carry. And I think the P365 has shown that in just the sheer amount of sales that they have. Now, going into popularity, popularity is important because we have holster availability, we have accessory availability, and in which case the P365 absolutely dominates. You can get holsters, sights, you can get most of those right from SIG's website where you can change the gun, you can do whatever you want, you can get pretty colors, you can get it in teal, you can get it in rose gold if you want. You can get triggers and magazine releases and freaking everything everything from the ground up just like the Glock and the MC9 is just not going to have that aftermarket support. So that is one thing to absolutely be aware of. And then finally we'll get to price. Now price can vary depending on where you're at and I live in Iowa so we're going to be talking about MSRP and then sort of Iowa prices and if you live in a bunch of different places where guns are harder to get or there's more people they're just inherently going to be more expensive. So the MSRP on the Canik I think is around $430 which is super super cheap considering the MSRP is usually the highest End, and you can get guns for a little bit cheaper. Now, you can get them for about $400, which is a hell of a deal considering it's just big enough to shoot well for self-defense and home defense, and it's just small enough to carry. So it really is a great all-around gun, whereas the P365 MSRP is around $490, $500, making it a little bit more, but it has been around longer, which means that you can often find deals that are on par with the Canik, depending on where you get them, what model you get, and so on. Now, the P365 is one of many. So if you look up the price on the standard and it's $499 and then you look up the Spectre Comp which has all the Pro Shop stuff and the Comp and the Red Dot and everything, it's going to be more expensive. It's going to be thirteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500. But that is one of the nice things about the P365 is you can kind of get it on the low end or you can get it on the high end, whereas the MC9, you kind of get what you get. And as far as price goes, I think they're both great for the money, but I really think the difference in lies with the size and shootability. I think if you're a super experienced person and you're willing to put in the time to shoot the P365, I think you can get a very potent gun that you can use very well, but you do have to practice a lot with it. Uh, if you're looking for a super small gun, the P365 is another way to go, absolutely. If you're looking for the smallest possible 9mm that's going to be capable for carry, reliable, durable, I think the P365 is your ticket. But I think if you're looking for something a little bit more shootable, you feel like maybe the 365 is a little small for you, you're looking to get into a bunch of gun for the money, and you just want a really good freaking trigger, and you want to impress your friends with your subcompact, you want to shoot at 100 yards, I think the the MC9 is the way to go as far as that goes. Let me know what your pick is. It'd be interesting to see what you guys decide, whether you like the P365 or whether you're trading those in for your new Canik MC9. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to Peace Apart Your Oklahoma Shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.